Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Um, I'm Anita Heward. I am the press officer for the European Planetary Science Congress. We are delighted to be here in Berlin at the Technical University. We're back in Berlin for the first time since our founding conference back in 2006. Um, we have two press conferences two press conferences this week, um, this one today and another one on Friday at the same time, so 12.45, that's going to be about astrobiology. But today we are delighted to be looking forward to the launch of BepiColombo in a month's time. So we have um, some of the new exciting science results that were presented yesterday here at EPSC um, by Bastian Brugger and Thomas Rone. And then we will be handing on to the Bepi Colombo team, so the project scientists from the European Space Agency, Johannes Benkoff, Joanna Oliveira from the European Space Agency, and Go Murakami from JAXA. So I'm going to hand over first to uh, Bastian. We are going to be going straight through the presentations and then taking questions at the end. If you do have questions, either email me. My contact details were on the press invitation. Uh, we have a chat room by the live screen window or tweet uh, at Europlanet Media or using the hashtag EPSC2018. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Uh, so yeah, my name is Bastien Roger. I'm a PhD student working at LAM in Marseille, and I work on the interior of terrestrial planets. So in that context, Mercury has always been a peculiar case uh, in the solar system. Um, it is the smallest of the four terrestrial planets, uh, but is, given its size, it has quite a high mass and thus a high bulk density. Uh, which is explained by an enrichment in dense materials that is mostly iron compared to other terrestrial planets. So to be honest, we didn't know that much about Mercury uh, before the messenger mission, uh, which ended up a few years ago, and um, which aimed at depicting a global overview of the planet's properties, uh, that is like the surface composition and also the gravitational data. And today we know that the interior of Mercury is constituted of a metallic core and a silicate mantle, as for all other terrestrial planets. But as I told you before, the metallic core is really large compared to the other uh, planets because of this enrichment in iron. And uh, moreover, the recent uh, results have shown that the distribution of elements inside these different layers inside the planet is also different uh, compared to the Earth, for instance. So this gives us a really uh, peculiar and unique uh, property about Mercury. And this raises actually the question of the origin of such a weird object. And uh, for this, I'm going to hand to Thomas. Thank you. Yes, so I'm Thomas, also a PhD student working uh, at LAM in Marseille. And uh, as Bastien was saying, the unique properties are, of Mercury are really challenging our understanding of terrestrial planets formation. And I think we still have a lot to learn from uh, Mercury, actually. Uh, its mantle, uh, its chemical composition, I think, could tell us a lot about the uh, conditions in the early solar system and the processes at play during uh, the formation of the building blocks of Mercury and the other terrestrial planets. Um, but we, we are a long way to go um, to, under, to fully understand uh, Mercury's formation. And I think the Bepi Colombo mission will take us a step further uh, in our understanding and characterization of Mercury. And thanks to that, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to build a more consistent picture of the formation of uh, Mercury and the other terrestrial planets. And um, I think now Johannes will be able to uh, speak into more details about the Bepi Colombo mission itself and uh, its capabilities. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my name is Johannes Benkoff. I work for ESA and I'm the project scientist of the Bepi Colombo mission. Today we are about 33 days away from launch, so very close, and we are very much excited about this. Uh, 
Bepi Colombo is a two spacecraft mission. So on Bepi Colombo, that's special, we will send two spacecraft to Mercury. It's a combined mission between the European Space Agency and the Japanese Space Agency, JAXA. And uh, one spacecraft is uh, called the MPO, it's a Mercury Planetary Orbiter. And uh, this orbiter is provided by the European Space Agency is more focused on the planet itself and on the interior and so it has a low eccentric polar orbit 480 times 1500 kilometers uh, orbital period of 2.3 hours and a downing capacity of about 1.5 terabits per year the nice thing about the spacecraft from the science point of view but terrible for our engineers is that the spacecraft is almost media pointing all the time and that was very challenging for the design. The second spacecraft is provided by the Japanese Space Agency. It's a Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter and it has a more eccentric orbit, uh, 490 times 11,640 kilometers. And this orbit is necessary because this orbit of more focus on the environment around the planet and for that reason you want not only be close to the planet you want also a little bit further away from the planet to study the interaction of the solar wind with the planet and the uh, what's going on in the environment and this spacecraft is a spinning spacecraft uh, with a spin rate of about uh, 15 orbits per minute uh, both spacecraft uh, are brought together to a Mercury by our transfer module and this transfer module is pro, uh, uh, the propellant is solar electric propulsion and with this transfer module we bring the two spacecraft to Mercury and when we are at Mercury it will be jettisoned and the two spacecraft are on their own and will be brought to their dedicated orbits. And here in summary uh, I have uh, put uh, some things together, for example, the science topics which we would like to achieve with Bappi Colombo. We would like to focus on the origin and evolution of our solar system, on Mercury, the interior, the structure, the geology and the composition, but also the exosphere and the composition and dynamics of the exosphere and the structure of the dynamics of the magnetosphere are important uh, topics we would like to study. Then from Mariner 10, and it was confirmed by Messenger, we know that Mercury has a magnetic field. And also here we want to like to study the origin of this magnetic field. And the nice thing about Bepi Columbus also that we could test Einstein's theory of general relativity we, because we are in a planet which is close to the sun and very fast going around the sun. And there also relativistic effects play a role. On the Japanese orbiter, we have five instruments, or instrument suites, and we will hear more about that later. Uh, since the Japanese spacecraft is a spinning spacecraft, and during the cruise, everything is stacked together and transported by the transfer module, we also need uh, a sun shield to protect the spacecraft during the cruise. It's like if you have a chicken on a barbecue and you forget to turn it, it will burn, and since we cannot turn the MMO during uh, the cruise, we have to protect it by a sun shield. And then on our orbiter, we have 11 instruments with a comprehensive payload which focus to study the surface composition and the interior and the surrounding. And uh, last but not least, I said that we have also the transfer module. At the moment, everything is in Kourou, and in Kourou, uh, we have lately stuck together uh, the Japanese and the European spacecraft, uh, and it will stay now in this com uh, 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 configuration for the next seven years, because our cruise to Mercury is quite long. And we also have finished our fueling of the spacecraft, uh, and here on the image uh, you see uh, the crew which is specially protected because there are some hazardous fuels which we use uh, in order to bring our spacecraft to Mercury. What is the current status? We started our launch campaign already in April. Uh, recently on the 29th of August we had a launch a vehicle readiness review so our rocket is ready to take us uh, to Mercury or 
to take our spacecraft out of uh, the Earth, and then we are flying to Mercury. Then we had a fueling readiness review on the 30th of August. Uh, that was the day when we could start uh, to fuel the hazardous fuels uh, onto our spacecraft. And last week we had an operation readiness meeting, and also that went uh, successful. And the last week was then dominated by fueling activities of uh, our spacecraft and the transfer module. Uh, we used monomethyl hydrogen for the MTM, hydrogen for the MPO, and uh, the MMO is, uh, was already loaded before it was stuck together, and they uh, used cold gas uh, as uh, fuel. Uh, upcoming activities for the next months, uh, so we will uh, then, after we are fueled now, we put the two spacecraft on our transfer module, and this configuration is uh, called the Mercury Composited uh, Spacecraft Configuration. And when we have everything in that configuration, we will do a short functional test. And uh, after the functional test is ready, we bring all this together in another area. It's called uh, the assembly facility in Kourou, where our spacecraft will then put on top of the Ariane uh, 5 launcher. And uh, then we will need to remove the last uh, red tags and the pumps, which uh, are used for purging at the moment in order to keep uh, our instruments clear. And then a uh, couple of days uh, f before launch, we close then uh, the fairing. And one day before launch, uh, the launcher will be rolled out to the launch pad. And then the launch of Bepi Colombo is foreseen for the 19th of October, 2245. But that is the time in Kourou, here in Europe. It will be early in the morning at 345. And it's already then Saturday, the 20th of October. Uh, here you see that we have a long uh, way in front of us, uh, so after we launch Pepe Colombo, we have a seven years of cruise, and during the cruise we need to also need the help of the planet uh, to, to get some, uh, to break our spacecraft, so we have to do some flybys. In total, there will be nine flybys, one at Earth, two at Venus, and six at Mercury. And then finally, in December 25, we will arrive with our spacecraft at Mercury. And in uh, May 2026, we will start our science operation. And it's foreseen one year nominal mission until May 27. And uh, if we are lucky, we may have also one year of extension. And as a conclusion, we will send two spacecraft as a take-home mission for a very comprehensive investigation of the planet and its environment. And Pepe Colombo for sure will increase our knowledge of the planet of mysteries and uh, provide better clues to understanding of the formation history. We will follow on on messenger results, which lately brought wonderful and spectacular results uh, uh, from Mercury to Earth. And Bepi Colombo, as I said, is on track for launch in October 2018. And what I would, that's also a personal thing, but uh, also for the whole team, I would like to acknowledge an outstanding cooperation between the European and Japanese scientists. And uh, with this slide, I hand over to Joanna, because some of the mysteries of Mercury, which we would like to follow up with Bepi Colombo, are structures like hollow, which may be created by some volatiles, which recently uh, went away from the planet. There is water ice, although the temperature is very hot on the surface, 450 degrees. Uh, but in some craters where the sun never shines into, there's water ice. And then Mercury has an Earth-like magnetic field. And here, Joanna will go a little bit deeper into it. Thank you. So I am Joanna Oliveira, working at uh, ESA as a research fellow. And my topic is the magnetic, uh, planetary mag uh, magnetic fields. So uh, I can start. So why Mercury? That is the first question that we should uh, ask ourselves. So Mercury is one little piece of the puzzle that helps us to understand the evolution of our solar system. Uh, Mercury has uh, a magnetic field, a core magnetic field, uh, like the Earth, uh, so that's why it's so mysterious and we should 
go there and study Mercury. So this is the Hertz magnetic field looks like. Uh, the bluish color means that the uh, field lines are getting, uh, uh, getting down to the Earth, and the reddish color means that the field lines are uh, getting out from the planet. Uh, usually we are used to see a magnet in the middle of the planet. That is correct. It works like that, a magnet. Um, and this is what we have for Mercury. We can see immediately that we don't have any information in the southern hemisphere because messenger spacecraft have a very eccentric orbit and we are lacking information of that. Um, we can also see that the Mercury's magnetic field is very weak compared to the Earth's one. That is another thing that we should to understand. And even more, um, the intensity of the magnetic, um, the intensity and the magnetic equator is uh, in the northern hemisphere. This is now the crustal magnetic field. The rocks uh, record information of uh, the core magnetic field when they cool down. Uh, and this is for the Earth. We can see that uh, mainly the strong anomalies, strong magnetic anomalies are uh, near the continents. And this is what we have now for Mercury. Very small special extent of the crustal magnetic field because we need to be very, very close to the surface. Uh, and it happened in the last moments of messenger uh, mission. So everything still to be almost to be discovered. Um, and this is one of the main luck to constrain dynamo models for Mercury and therefore to constrain our own dynamo on the Earth. So we are looking for Bepi Colombo to understand better our evolution. Thank you. And the last topic is uh, the Japanese spacecraft, uh, MMO. So, hello, I'm Go Murakami uh, from Japanese Space Agency, uh, JAXA, uh, working as uh, a BEPCOM project scientist, so counterpart uh, of uh, Johannes. So, today I introduce uh, our spacecraft, uh, MIO. So, now, uh, recently we, we had a public contest of naming our spacecraft and we selected uh, the new nickname uh, as MIO. So, today I call uh, MMO as uh, MIO. So, uh, as already shown, uh, MIO is uh, developed by JAXA and uh, it is a spinning spacecraft with a four second uh, spin period. And the shape is uh, like an octagonal shape and uh, it is covered with uh, solar uh, reflecting mirrors in order to reflect the solar input, solar flux. And these photos are from uh, all from uh, uh, the launch site, uh, Kuru in French Guiana. So after shipment uh, to Kuru, uh, we, have, we performed uh, the two months of uh, standalone activities, like uh, uh, replacement of uh, some parts and finalizing the spacecraft and also final health check. And all of them we completed uh, at the end of June. And now, uh, we the MIO is uh, stacked onto the MPO and they are together uh, for seven, more than seven years until arrival at the Mercury. And scientific point of view, uh, MIO is the first spacecraft uh, with a complete in instrument package for investigating Mercury's environment. So like uh, uh, magnetospheres, uh, exosphere and dust so we have uh, five major instruments to measure uh, this uh, environment around Mercury. And this is very important for us because so uh, in our solar system, solar wind, uh, uh, the supersonic uh, plasma gas flow uh, always flows and impacts to the planet. And we know uh, the magnetosphere works as uh, like uh, barriers uh, for the planets, but we 
have not yet fully understood how solar wind um, controls and effects on the planetary environments. And Mercury is the best target to understand because Mercury is uh, closest to the sun, so it is exposed to the strongest solar wind in the solar system. And it, Mercury has a weak magnetic field, so we can study uh, the uh, magnetosphere uh, response to the solar wind and uh, its environment uh, in the uh, most extreme environment in the solar system. And this topic will be the key step for future science, so uh, the habitability at the exoplanets. So we have already know uh, there are so many exoplanets and especially uh, many rocky planets like Earth-like planets uh, around the cold, cool stars or red dwarfs uh, like uh, Tropist-1 system. And in such system, the habitable zones are much closer to the host star uh, than the solar system and even than the Mercury position. And in such a situation, uh, the planets are exposed to the extreme uh, strong so, uh, stellar wind. So we have not yet known uh, in such case, uh, the planets can keep their uh, habitable environment like uh, atmospheres. So in order to understand this, uh, the Mercury observation uh, is very important because Mercury is uh, the most uh, extreme environment in the solar system. So this is our science topic uh, by Mio. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we now have some time for questions. Um, does anybody here have a question for the, for the panel? Yes. Uh, there we go. Excellent. Uh, Schmidt uh, from North Deutschland. I have got just one question. Uh, you mentioned the really hard conditions near Mercury. Uh, have you a uh, special hardened electronics in your space flight? Well, uh, yes, uh, we had to develop more than 85% uh, of our equipment, especially for the environment around Mercury. So for Bapicolo, we could only use 15% of the shelf equipment. All the other things is either newly developed or had to be qualified. And the harsh conditions are, on one hand, the high temperatures, which are 10 times higher than what we see here on, on Earth from the insulation which we got from the sun. And so on Mercury, we have surface temperature of 450 degrees during the day, but minus 170 degrees during the night. Uh, for the spacecraft, which is always Nadia pointing, that means that it gets the sun, because if we are in a polar orbit, almost on all sides of the spacecraft, uh, and even since the planet is also radiating heat because the planet is so hot, then we additionally also got uh, heat from the planet. So we had to also there a uh, special trick to get our spacecraft cooled because we have one radiator uh, on one side and this radiator is supposed only to see uh, the dark space in order that we can get rid of the heat. But if every half of the orbit, we have to turn our spacecraft by 180 degrees to put the radiator on the other side in order to avoid that it gets some sun. And uh, also for uh, the radiation, because we are close to the sun, there's a harsh radiation environment. We had uh, special protection on Bepi Colombo. We use uh, special paints uh, on the antenna that the antenna stays white and doesn't get yellowish or black over time and all these things. Okay, thank you. Um, Lizzie from Nature asked a question in the chat room about why Mercury, oh sorry, why Bepi Colombo will take so long to get to Mercury. I think she asked that before you explained in your presentation. If you have any further questions about that, Lizzie, then please let us know and we will follow up again. We have seen your question. Um, Leo Enright from Irish TV um, asked Joanna that you have said that um, there are big knowledge gaps um, after Messenger and will Bepi Colombo fill in? In all of those gaps um, and how can it do this when messenger couldn't 
Uh, well, um, having two spacecrafts around Mercury are already helps a lot distinguish the internal and external magnetic fields. Uh, and on top of that, we have also information of the southern hemisphere this time. If we are close enough uh, to the planet to uh, measure the crustal magnetic field, we have to wait for the end of the mission, but that we cannot speak now. Do you want to? <laughs> okay. Um, Sarah, do we have anything on Twitter? No? Uh, any other questions from people here? Oh, you've done a very good job with your presentations, obviously. Well, if you want, I can elaborate a little bit more on the long journey. Uh, because it's very hard to get uh, to Mercury, you, you need a lot of energy, even more energy than sending a spacecraft to Pluto. And uh, for that reason, uh, we could either pump a lot of fuel to go there, but uh, unfortunately that is not the case with the rockets we have right now. And therefore, we also need some help of the flybys uh, of the planet, which then you need to wait for a special constellation and for that reason it will take us seven years and in, in addition also solar electric propulsion is an enabling technology uh, and this solar electric propulsion also needs some time to build up the needed uh, speed. Um, Karl Urban, freelancer, um, um, could you say a bit more about the differences of the instrumentation of Messenger versus Bepi Colombo? Um, one big difference is that indeed we have two spacecraft and uh, many of the instruments we have on the Japanese spacecraft were not uh, on the messenger spacecraft like the plasma wave instruments uh, and uh, I guess Go can elaborate uh, more on this. On uh, our uh, spacecraft we have a bit of overlapping but many of the instruments have uh, a higher resolution, spatial or spectral resolution, so we will uh, get uh, better results. But in addition, we also have some new instrument, for example, a thermal infrared spectrometer uh, for the surface composition, which was not on MESSENGER. Uh, in addition, our radio science experiment is uh, very sophisticated in order also to be able to measure relativistic effects. Uh, and for that, we only we not only have uh, two band uh, in KA and uh, X band uh, transponder on board, we also have an accelerometer on board and this accelerometer measures uh, the radiation disturbances from the solar wind of the spacecraft and then we can correct our measurement uh, with the radio science in order to get the accuracy, for example, to measure relativistic effects and maybe so I can add uh, about uh, MIO. So MIO has a complete package of uh, plasma measurements. So, uh, so for example, plasma wave measurement and uh, some uh, particle sensors are very new uh, at Mercury. And also uh, MIO is a spinning spacecraft. This is the advantage for plasma measurement because uh, a messenger was a three axis attitude control, but uh, MIO is a spinning. So we have uh, almost the full coverage of the field of view for particle detections. So this is very uh, big advantage than messenger. Do we have any more questions here? Let me just check one more time with the live stream. Yes, we have a question from uh, Therion, or Therion, I'm not quite sure how. Um, apologies for mispronouncing your name along with others. Um, the transform module will stay on, uh, will stay on solar orbit. Um, would it be scientifically useful to crash it into Mercury and observe it with orbiters? No, we have not thought about that. Uh, the transfer module uh, is, uh, when we release it, it will stay in an orbit around the Sun, so it will not go into an orbit around Mercury. Uh, we will jettison it before we uh, release the uh, two orbiters, and only when the two orbiters are together with a weak gravity capture, we will fall into an orbit around Mercury. So when we release the transfer module, it's still in an orbit around the Sun, and for that reason, the uh, 
uh, transfer module will never reach Mercury. For the people that have just joined us, do you have any questions? Okay. Um, right then, um, let me just check the email one more time to see whether we've got any further things that have come through there. Sarah, anything on Twitter? Okay. Okay, well, I think in that case, oh no, sorry, there we go. Um, Carlos Molina um, says, how is the communication with Bepi Colombo when in orbit around Mercury? How much data will it get? Can we contact it at every time? Uh, not at every time. We have every day uh, between 8 and 10 hours where we can communicate with our spacecraft. And uh, that we will use to get our data down. Uh, we will get uh, from the uh, MPO about 1.5 uh, terabits in one year. Uh, on uh, MMO it's about a factor of 10 less. Uh, but uh, we will get a huge amount of data from the spacecraft. I had uh, some about uh, Mio. So for Mio, uh, it's a little bit more difficult for uh, communication because uh, we cannot downlink uh, all of data we uh, get uh, around Mercury. So we need uh, to select uh, which data should be downlinked and uh, which data is uh, interesting. So we have some strategy to select this and uh, now we are uh, uh, making the detailed plan for the observation and uh, for uh, telemetry communication downlink. Uh, so yes, we are now working on hard on this. Okay, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Robert Massey from the Royal Astronomical Society. I just want to ask about the hardened electronics and the materials you developed. Um, do you see that having a wider application away from actually the space program too, or perhaps for other missions or in industry? Uh, sometimes you cannot see it up front, but uh, most of the time uh, there is uh, a follow-up usage and, and some of the techniques uh, will be used for other missions if we are getting closer to the sun. I think we learned a lot uh, about this uh, harsh uh, environment uh, in the direction of the sun, but uh, also some of the techniques will be used for, for other missions, for example the JUICE mission will uh, build on some of the technology we have developed for our spacecraft. I've got a question for Thomas and uh, Bastien. I, I just wondered whether um, you wanted to elaborate a bit more on, on where you think that Bepi Colombo will be able to um, help your research and what you might find out from that in the future. Yep, uh, sure. Um, we have a lot of questions about the formation of Mercury, actually, and um, there are several uh, sides uh, in this story. First, there is the fact, as Bastian said, that the elements that constitute the, the rocks and the core of Mercury are slightly different, uh, slightly differently distributed uh, than the for the other planets, and this is probably diagnostic of the conditions under which the building blocks of the planets form. Um, and then there is the fact that Mercury is, has such a large uh, core fraction, which means that uh, its composition overall uh, is different uh, also in proportion to that of the other terrestrial planets. And this means that at some point something happened that separate the, the mantle, the, the rocks, from the metallic core. And to understand what kind of processes it could be, if it's a collision, if it's something that happened uh, before the, the accretion of the planets, we need more precise uh, measurements of the composition uh, of the planets and the relative abundances of the different elements. And maybe, Bastien, you can add a few words about the sulfides and the... Yeah, that's it, exactly. So, as I told earlier, um, the distribution of elements inside the mantle and inside the core of Mercury might be a bit different from what we know inside the Earth and all the terrestrial planets. But um, these are only hints, actually. Uh, we still need 
a lot of data to confirm this, and in particular for the core, it will be really difficult. Uh, and um, for the mantle, what we can do is uh, base our um, simulations on the surface composition and on laboratory experiments that are done on analogs of this surface composition, for instance. Uh, so for this, uh, Messenger will bring a lot also of... Uh, uh, um, Epicolombo, sorry, <laughs> will bring a lot uh, of uh, data uh, compared to Messenger and uh, something yeah, that uh, we found uh, recently about the presence maybe of sulfides uh, inside the mantle of mercury. Um, about the core also and the internal structure of the planet, not really the composition this time, uh, the size of the inner solid core uh, of mercury is still really unclear. And uh, Messenger, uh, sorry, <laughs> once again, the Picolombo and uh, the analysis of the magnetic field of the planets uh, should be able to tell us a lot more about the size of the liquid fraction inside uh, the core of Mercury and also on the size of the uh, solid fraction. So. Um, we have one more question from Therion again. Um, are there any plans to, co uh, to cooperate, ob um, to collaborate observations of the solar wind or plasma with the Parker Solar Probe, which is heading into the inner solar system as well? Yes, now we are starting to think about such collaboration because uh, it's lucky uh, now we have uh, s uh, several spacecraft uh, at the inner solar system. So it's especially for the measuring the solar wind and uh, its interaction to the planets, uh, yes, it's very important collaboration between uh, such uh, solar probes and baby combos. So yes, we have just started to think about that. Any more questions from the floor? No? Anything from Twitter? No, Twitter's very quiet today. Um, I'll just give it another couple of moments. Every, every time I almost shut it down, another question seems to pop up on the chat room. But that also, that also seems to be quiet. Okay. Um, I think in that case then, thank you all very much for your time and for giving us a really exciting overview of things to come. Um, we will have a further press briefing here at EPSC on Friday on the topic of astrobiology and society in Europe and looking at the implications of astrobiology for us all. Um, so please do join us for that. If you have any questions that weren't answered today by our panel, then please do email them via the contact details on the press release, which has gone out in uh, collaboration with this press conference, or contact me, or tweet us, or um, find us through other means. Um, so anyway, we thank you for joining us, and we look forward to um, talking to you again on Friday. Thank you very much.